Our today's topic is paleo ecology and paleo climates, and in which we will be discussing today the paleo climates. As we have discussed in the previous uh, topics, that the paleo climates are the ancient climates. A climate. What is a climate? There is a distinction between a climate and a weather. Weather is the short term. Uh, pattern of the conditions of a particular area while climate is a long term salana ke hisab se kitni barishein hoti hain that would be seen under the climate while aaj barish ho rahi hai ya nahi that would be weather aaj ka mausam kaisa hai that would be weather yahan ka mausam garam martub hai that would be a climate so the paleo climatology is a study of changes in climate taken on the scale of entire history of the earth we want to know that what sort of uh, uh, weather patterns on a long term were prevailing across all the period of the earth and all the parts of the earth whole globe up uh, the uh, the poles will have the different paleo ecology uh, and paleo climate and the, uh, the equator would have another right so along the latitude altitude we see the patterns of the paleo climate and it uses the methods from the earth and life sciences earth sciences uh, jo uh, uh, geology hai and the life sciences of course we know that it is a paleontology paleo climatology obtains data from uh, previously preserved things such as rocks sediments ice sheets trees rings corals shells and microfossils so all of these things they are combining some set of data and those data are you know uh, read through we assess that what sort of uh, particular weather conditions across the whole time were prevailing in that particular area because you know the weather has its own effects on the environment on the species on a, even on a rock right so rock has its own weathering so uh, based on all this information we can assess that what sort of uh, environment is prevailing across a particular area of time for the last six, uh, 600 million years earth has oscillated at least five times between ice house and greenhouse conditions ice house means ke earth has ice ages five times uh, the whole earth was from uh, prevalently covered with ice sheets it uh, the glaciation started the more and more temperature dropped and the organism which were living in those area they have to cope with the decreasing temperature and then there are the greenhouse conditions you know greenhouse effect which is uh, you know mean ma man made so greenhouse condition in which the temperature is increasing so earth is oscillating between decreasing and increasing average temperatures of the earth and that is happening for last 600 million years during last 600 million years five times this has happened and uh, now uh, the spending most of the time in greenhouse climates uh, across all these 600 million years most of the time was uh, hot there were more temperature the temperature was increasing most of the time if there were some short windows of ice ages jo ke last time it was more than 10000 years ago so five climate zones are there on the earth surface of earth and we are categorizing on the based of the conditions today right so one is the humid tropical right so no winters and average temperatures above 18 degrees celsius so the humid tropical are across the equator if you see the tropical rain forest malaysia indonesia nigeria uh, and the brazil right so these are the different areas where you will find these uh, humid tropical conditions and there is no winter right so across sara saal wahan pe garmi padti uh, the temperature is above 18 degrees celsius and you won't see any winter there and then there are dry subtropical uh, evaporation exceed the pre precipitation uski misal uh, hamara apna pakistan hai uh, this is uh, dry subtropical where 
we have uh, some of the areas just like Balochistan where there is much more uh, uh, evaporation than the precipitation. Barish kam hoti hai aur evaporation zyada hoti hai. And then there are the warm temperature, mild winters and the cool temperatures which are having severe winters. For example, the temperate areas across the world, uh, uh, most of the Europe, Siberia. And then there are the polar. Polar are the Arctic and Antarctic region where you have the uh, no summers and temperature is always below uh, 10 degrees Celsius. So these are the five uh, different uh, climate zones and these five climate zones are for the environment of today. Now take the whole context in the ancient times and if we want to discuss that what sort of environment was prevailing for a particular organism which are living in a particular area then we have to see that what paleoclimate was there. So this is a very big question as we have discussed with the paleoecology that there is some element of speculation there. Same is the case over here as well. Uh, can these zones be recognized through deep time and be used to develop models for both short and long term climate change? So the answer is that we can identify the climate zones. A range of geological and paleontological criteria has helped to identify the climatic zones through time. So we can do that. And then uh, how can we do that? We are doing that with the help of calcretes, uh, which are the uh, soil rich in calcium carbonate and evaporites. These are help identify the dry arid climates. Agar kahan pe khushk or martub environment hai, to wahan pe aapko calcretes and evaporates. These are the two type of stones which will be much more prevalent, you will find those. And the same is the case for the drop stones and tillates. Drop stones are the stones that plummet from the bottoms of the melting icebergs into seabed sediments. So, if you see seabed, you have to see that the sediments are normally uh, se dur kahi, uh, polar area, se aaye the. Uh, iceberg unko apne saath le aaya. Those are called drop stones and uh, tillites. So, this means that there are tillites or rocks and salt left behind by advancing glaciers. If the glacier is bigger, then there are also tillites with it. So, these are indicating the polar conditions. That means that if you have these things in there, then that area will be the poles of the poles. And then we have the, uh, what are the different trends of the climate change? There are the uh, short term uh, trends which are less than 100,000 years. For example, the uh, ice age, this is a short term trends and then there are the long term trends, right? So these are the trends which are more than 100,000 years. Um, and then there are the consequences for the evolution. That means uh, if the environment is changing, if the climate is changing, the organisms have to adopt. And when the organism adapt, they are changing their characteristics and that result into new species. There is much more selection pressure, which we will be discussing later. And this results into the evolution. And this makes a whole feedback loop. Organism change and due to the change of organism, organisms do something and that changes the environment as well. So it, this makes a, a feedback loop and based on this feedback loop, the, in, the scientists of the previous times have said that, uh, have devised a Gaia hypothesis, we, which we have discussed in the previous topics as well, in which we perceive the planet Earth as the living organisms. Uh, that means it is living organism and, uh, uh, but this is not right. And it is true that we have some feedback loops for certain uh, periods of the time in Earth history.